Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so once we have not primed up, which I've just done here with a Zenithal Prime, which is just a black prime with a white overcoat, we're going to come in with our first colour now. And our first colour is going to be dark green, and all we're going to be doing is, of course, using it for not the brave goblin skin. And she is uh, depicted quite often as a dark green skin goblin, so this is going to be a good base colour for that. And it's just a matter of picking out all the areas where you can see her skin poking through. And of course, don't forget her uh, toes as well, because... Uh, not doesn't actually wear any boots or shoes she has her feet uh, out in the open so don't forget to do those too okay so once we've got that base color on her skin we're going to come in now with some basalt gray and our basalt gray we're going to be using for the majority of her clothing except for the uh over cloak she has as well as the hood we want to be leaving those out so we basically want to be doing the pants and her uh top as well now she is very sort of uh very toned down on her colors and she only has a very few colors on her so we're going to try and liven this up a bit by adding a few other colors to the miniature while still keeping true to her and the way we're going to do this is using a different types of intensities of uh, off grays and blacks trying to keep it as close as we can to her style as well as hopefully trying to make it a little bit more visually interesting but then once we have that done, I'm going to get into a nice tricky part of a miniature always, and that's the eyes. So starting off with some flat yellow here, because she has very nice, vibrant yellow eyes. So we want to make sure we can depict that really well. And this is, of course, going to help with keeping our nice and steady hand trying to do eyes. I'm always very nervous about doing eyes, so don't be afraid if it takes a couple of attempts. And just making sure we get a small amount of paint on the brush, and we're just carefully placing the tip in there. Then once we have the yellow parts of the eyes to do, it's time to do the very, very pain and annoying bit that you're always nervous about, and that's always the pupils, because you don't want to try and make them look all derpy. So this is always going to take a bit of practice, and it's just a matter of getting a very fine amount on your brush, really keeping that tip as sharp as you possibly can, or in other cases, putting a little bit of black paint onto a little uh, needle or something with a very fine point and just dotting it on. It may take a few tries, but don't worry. Just wait for the paint to dry and then try again. And now we've got those eyes out of the way, we can move back on to doing some of the easier areas. So we're going to come in with some black grey now. And this is what I was saying, I was trying to differentiate the colours on the miniature here. So we used our basalt grey for her underclothes. And now for her sort of uh, over cloak and hood, we're going to be using some of this black grey. So hopefully it's going to separate the colours out a little bit. They are a slightly different colours, so we're just trying to add in that uh, variation in there because she pretty much only wears sort of very dark gray or black leather armor so we want to try and add a little bit more visual interest than that um, especially for a miniature when it's on the table it could very easily get muddied up and look like a black splodge so hopefully this is gonna add some interest to the piece and then once we've done that we're going to come in now with some burnt umber and for our burnt umber what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using it for all the leather straps that Knot has on her so of course her belt uh, we're also going to be doing just the handle on her dagger as well uh, with that nice burnt umber and she does have a nice big uh, leather strap running across her back for holding weapons and such like that so don't forget to do that as well then once we have all that leather working done, we're going to come in now with some mahogany brown, which is an even lighter brown again. And we're going to be using this for not crossbow that she uses. Um, because this is depicted here in the very early stage, she doesn't have a magical crossbow or anything like that. So we just want to be doing a plain and simple crossbow, but we want to be keeping it a little bit different in color from everything else we've got on that. So that's why we're choosing a lighter brown for the crossbow. And then with that crossbow complete, we're going to be coming in now with some ivory. And all we're going to be doing with this is we want to be painting up uh, Knot's mask. As well as that, we also want to be painting up the uh, wrappings that she has herself. Because she was always trying to hide her appearance and make her uh, not look like a goblin. So she put on all these wrappings. Um, as well as that, we want to be making sure that we get those uh, wrappings uh, across her ears. And that they're sculpted in. Uh, they're probably a little bit hard to see on camera, uh, especially with them all being painted up green at the moment. So it's just a matter of going on with a fine tip brush and trying to pick out all those little 
wrappings and straps she has along her. And then once we have those wrappings and her mask painted up, we're going to come in now with some dragon red. And all we're going to be doing with our dragon red is we're going to be painting in the little sculpted in lips that are on her mask. Because uh, depicted in her artwork, she the mask always had nice bright red lips uh, because it came from a doll, I believe. So we want to try and replicate that there. Now, that was a very tiny bit of paint, and you can see I'm struggling to keep focus as well. But just uh, patience is going to be key here to try and getting this right. But don't be afraid to um, repaint over it if you don't get it the way you want it and try again. And then with those nice lips painted up, we're going to come in now with some greedy gold. And we're going to be painting this just on a few trinkets that uh, Not has on her that she's stolen. Um, so you can just see here that it looks like it's a little coin medallion, maybe even her uh, gold buttons that she's known for stealing. So it's um, totally up to you. As well as that, she also has a nice uh, earring on her as well. We also want to make sure we get that with the gold too. And then once we have that gold detail done, we're going to come in now with some gun metal. And we're only going to need this for one spot on the miniature, and that's the blade of the dagger. So getting that nice gun metal in there, just being careful not to get it anywhere we don't want to. Nice easy paint job for our gun metal as well. So <laughs> just making sure that we keep it to where we want it, we don't accidentally get it anywhere where we don't. And then once we have that dagger painted up, we're going to come in now with some green skin from Army Painter. And this is going to be for the... Uh, highlights layer of our goblin skin here so we started off with that nice dark green so now we're going to come in with goblin skin which is a lot lighter green and we're just going to be picking out some of these highlighted areas so like the tip of the nose bottom of the chin the tips of the ears just um places like that where the sun looks like it would naturally hit to give in these highlights and then once we have those highlights done, we're going to come in now with some Athonian camo shade, which is a green wash. And we're just going to be placing the wash over everywhere that's green, of course. And since we've already placed the highlight on, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go for a nice blend uh, in there. And it's not going to be such a harsh uh, contrast with these two colors. That's, that's what I'm trying for anyway. So we'll see how well it comes out in the end. But that green wash is, going to, of course, going to brighten up that color of her skin too. So... Don't forget to just place it on and be careful of any pooling. Then once our wash is completely dry, we can move on to the next step, and that is coming in with some known oil. Now, coming on with the known oil, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing it anywhere that's uh, in our dark colors area, so basically her clothing, and of course don't forget about her uh, dagger as well. We want to make sure we get the known oil on that. So we're going to be uh, avoiding the wrappings, as well we want to be leaving that we're doing a different wash over that so it's just basically just the dark clothing that we want then now with that null oil dried up we're going to come in now with some agrax earth shade and again this wash is only going to be used in a very small amount of places and that's just anywhere that we've got our uh, leather straps our crossbow and the tip of the dagger as well uh, not the tip sorry the handle of the dagger um so it's just all in those small places being very careful not to accidentally get it anywhere where we don't and just as you can see i'm using a finer tip brush while doing these washes as well so because she's such a small miniature and we need to get it into some very small places and with all that complete we're going to come in now with some seraphim sepia and our seraphim sepia we're going to be just placing over her bandages and wrappings that she has on there giving them a really sort of old and used look it's going to really help bring that out, especially at the end uh, once it's all dry so just being again careful use a smaller brush like I'm using here because she is a small miniature like I said before and there are only very small areas that we're doing especially when it comes to doing around her wrappings around the ears and that so just being careful again with the pooling so we don't have it running anywhere we don't want to and then we can move on to the next step and now that we have all the washers dry we're going to come back in with some ivory now and with our ivory, all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be touching up those areas where the sun would naturally hit on these wrappings. So as you can see, we've got that nice seraphim sepia into those uh, recesses, and we're just coming back up with that ivory and hitting those edges, making those wrappings look a lot more realistic and a bit more 3D on the model as well. And then once we've completed that, we're going to come back in now with some black grey. And all we're going to be doing again is the same thing we did with our wrappings, is we're just going to be hitting the high points of the area. So the clothing especially is a little bit easier to 
define where those high points are because they're nicely sculpted into the model and then just running the edge of the brush along to catch those high points and really hoping that the highlight comes out how we want it so the sun is naturally hitting from those areas. And then with that complete, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be moving on to the base. And it's totally up to you what you want to do here, whether you want to go with a nice big fancy base with uh, not in some sort of scenery. But for me, all I'm going to be doing is just painting out a black and keeping it nice and simple like I have with the rest of my uh, Critical Role miniatures so far. But it's totally up to you. And then with that, let's start moving on to some of those nice pretty shots of what the final image comes out like. And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up Not the Brave from the Critical Role Miniatures by Steamforge Games. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along or you just want to see me paint up some cool miniatures. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.